Okay, so we've arranged out the beginning of our tune and we've come into the sort of uh, pre-main section of our track. And just as we do that, I'm just going to go into our drums and I'm going to take out the... I'm going to take out all of the open hats because we don't want them coming in. So we'll delete, we'll delete the first... Um, we've got the first eight bars there. And we're going to take out the tambourines too. So we'll just drop into this. Feel free to go through and actually start deleting bits and pieces out. So I could, for example, just delete that kick drum out and it would change the whole track. There, for example, again, I could just delete that to kick drum out. So we can get rid of that crash there and that extra kick drum. We don't need that just yet. And we can just minimize this back down to its original size. Okay, so in uh, dubstep, the, the bass line tends to change throughout the track. So this, this um, uh, what we've got now, this bass line that we've got now playing would change. Um, it, it's basically a case of changing the LFO types or LFO rates that we set previously. So we could use the same rhythm and you could just change the LFOs or you could maybe change the rhythm ever so slightly. It's It takes far too long to actually show you to, how to do it. Um, but I've showed you the techniques on how to actually create the baseline to this point. If you want to, um, for example, duplicate it and then slightly change all of the LFOs or move the pattern around, um, you could do something like that just to change it up. So if I just highlight across, just to give you an example, I'll highlight across, highlight across the last eight bars and if I go to edit and select in loop, and then we can alt and click, and drag these across. I'm just gonna move this breakdown eight bars on. So we get to this point. Um, so just continue on our open hat and continue on our Clap on our snare there. So here you maybe kill your open hat. And then in your bass line, we maybe change the pattern around a bit. So if we go into the distorted bass, maybe mute the phase, mute the sub. Um, and if we go into the distorted bass, instead of having quarter notes, we can maybe change this to eights. And then if we go in and edit the LFO, We could use maybe the let's see what other bases we've got. So it's basically just a case of playing around with what you've got in your mix at the minute. So we've got this one base, we can maybe try using it for this first uh what have we got? This first bar.
So then you could change the this base here to have it sort of repeating like what 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 what. So we can push this rate up. Okay, so I mean you've got uh, that base there, and then all all you need to do is just duplicate that down onto maybe your phase base. So if you just Alt and click that down, it'll bring the automation with it, and you can bring the sub base under that as well. So then all of a sudden you've got a new pattern. <laughs> So I mean just play around with that and create a brand new rhythm for that section and then once you come out at the other end of that you drop into and um, the you drop, drop into these factory noise and the riser sound again. And then you can go back to your original main baseline. So if I just copy this, let's go in and grab our beats from, I'll just grab the beats from the, the last eight bars actually. So if we go to edit, select, in loop, let's minimize these drums. Oh, didn't mean to do that. So select, and loop and we can just copy that across to the end of the eight bars We can bring across that crash that takes us into it. Just copy over the strings into that build up. Keep the strings playing throughout that part now. And we can highlight and select in loop, copy that across. And if we delete out the open hats and we'll have them coming in just at bar 65. Just go through and delete bits and bobs out. But feel free to go through and maybe change an LFO type of a certain sound. You know, if you don't want this bass sound like this. Just change the LFO and you'll get a brand new sound every time. And it's just a case of going through and doing those minor tweaks and um, just fiddle around with what you've got there and continue on until you've got a finished track at the end of it. Just to finish it up, I'm going to go to edit, select in loop there, and I'm going to copy that across. And for the last bars, if I just delete out the phase base, delete out our distorted bass as well.
There you go, that is the end of the track. I just finished that with uh, digging out the tambourines in the open hat, just the kick drums um, and all the other drum samples and the sub bass. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as I say, um, do spend a lot of, lot of time going through and making those minor wee tweaks and you know taking out a kick drum, putting in a different bass, maybe even go through a few sample packs and find some sort of uh, you know fuzzy noise and drop that in where you've taken a kick drum out or you know instead of having the bass line which usually comes around you know puts put in a I don't know a sample of someone talking or I don't know a balloon popping something like that there just to make it different every time the loop comes around to make it sound as if um, a lot of work has gone into it because believe me by the end you've finished um, a lot of work will have gone into this and uh, one final tip I forgot to mention actually is if you are creating various other bass lines um, and you do if you've got your original baseline and instead of it instead of an LFO change that you want to do if you want to actually have it rising or falling a different way you can do that simply uh, if you just duplicate out at the base that you've got so if you've got your distorted base if you right click and duplicate it and then you can delete across what you've got and you can obviously um, put a different base in a different part so if I just play this you know this is the sound that it's making currently if you want to change that slightly, you can go to the pitch down at the bottom left here on the mod envelope. And if you turn it down the other direction, you know you've got a bit you've got a pitching from low to high. Or you can have an even longer pitch. If it's something like that there you want you could have you know a falling falling sound and then three bars later you could have a rising sound and then you know you could just play around tweak the sound slightly maybe take the drive away maybe try a different oscillator you know so you can obviously add those bits and pieces in at various different points in your track Okay, so don't forget to check back on the Sonic Academy website for further tutorials from myself, and I'll see you again.